What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, uh, I broke my Royal Rumble. It's a lesson of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh man, I'm upset. But, after a week, I did get it working. <laughs> yes, it's back, yes. All right, guys, you know, drill for now, follow me on all the socials. What are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. There's a convenient link tree link down below. It'll send you to all the socials, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. It'll send you everywhere. So what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Do you think because of me, and I'm going to tell you the story, but do you think because I swapped out the ROM chip, that's what caused my Royal Rumble to go down? I don't know. That's kind of like where the intro I said, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You'll understand when I give you the full story on this. So, I right now, I'm happy it's back and working. Now, it's pretty funny. If you go back to when I first got this machine, I had the whole intention of trading up. After this little um, issue that I ran into, it, now, I kind of have more of a sentimental value for this thing, and um, I'll still try to trade it. I have yet to beat it. Keep that in mind. I have yet to do what I wanted to do, which was complete the wizard mode. I have streamed this so far two or three times. It's been loads of fun streaming this. I have another video coming up. I'm going to talk about my audio jack hack that you could probably put on any pinball machine. This is just, it's been a great adventure with this. Again, a 1994 Data East Royal Rumble. This is a real Royal Rumble. This is not virtual. I actually had somebody ask that on stream. Uh, it's cool, I guess. I don't know. I laughed at that. But yes, this, this right here, we've been on a, on a journey. I've opened and closed the play field so many times. I've taken the glass off of this machine so many times. Um, but why are you all here? What are you talking about, Vic? What happened? Let me give you a little bit of a story on one day I came to play my Royal Rumble and half the lights didn't turn on. Now, I mentioned before, let me know in the comment section down below when you hear my story time, do you think it's because of the ROM chip that this issue happened? I originally thought that, but then after like fixing stuff, I don't think it was the ROM chip. Basically, what happened, if you see my streams, I was running 1.03 code on this. Newer pinball machines, you can connect them to the Wi-Fi. Code upgrades are very easy. Whereas a machine like this, it's actually a chip. There's an actual, like, I don't know, like a, it looks like a spider. There's an actual chip that you need to swap out to do an upgrade. And no, it's not like something you can put USB connection to it. You have to actually get somebody that has like a board writer or a chip reader writer. They have to write the code on the chip, they send you the chip, and then you swap it out. Basically, again, like I said, I was originally on 1.03. I saw that Royal Rumble has a 1.06 code update. I did find somebody on Pinside by the name of Pinball Roms. He does ROMs. And uh, I messaged him, I said, hey, I want the 1.06 of Royal Rumble. No problem, Vic. He sent me the CPU chip, and he also sent me the display chip. And I, I even live streamed it. This is what boggles my mind. I did the chip swap. Pretty cool. Not that difficult. Definitely have to be very careful. Um, I did the ROM swap. Played the game. I was good. The next day, I got ready to live stream it. I played it live. I was good. The next day, I wanted to keep playing it. I go, I turn on my machine, and hell broke loose. <laughs> I went to go turn on this machine and it didn't even get past the boot. It didn't like get to like the, the Royal Rumble. I only had half the play field lit. So the top half was lit, the bottom half was not. And again, it's something where like, you know, you just so, you know, once you turn on a machine, you kind of know what it does when it boots. You kind of see like the pin to DMD. I did see that. But I didn't see like the, and I didn't hear Hulk Hogan go like, oh, it's not for the WF Data East Royal Rumble. 
I didn't hear that. So I'm like, what the fuck happened now? I turn it off. I turn it back on. Same thing. This, the, the whole play field is, the bottom of it is just out. Turn it off. Turn it back on. Same thing. And now I'm like, oh shit, did I, did I do something? I quickly went and I looked at the ROM chips. And let me just show you what one of these look like. This is essentially what a ROM chip looks like. You can see it's got like the spider legs on it. This goes on a on an actual CPU board. It you know it's it's pretty small. It's like your old school chips. If you ever see like on VPX or Virtual Pinball the websites, that's what a ROM chip looks like. It's got like the tiny legs, but these legs are very fragile. And um, you know I swapped out this chip and like I mentioned before, where I'm like you know if it ain't broke don't fix it. I should have just left it alone. Um, anyway, my lower play field now is is out. I went into the the back box and I looked at the wrong. I looked at the chip, and I actually had one of the legs wasn't in. It wasn't in like the, its its slot. So I was like, oh, maybe like that's the issue. So I took out the ROM chip, and these are like sensitive. These like these little legs, they're very fragile and sensitive. You have to be careful with this. Um, I took it out, I fixed the pin, I put it in, I turn on my machine, and then all of a sudden, uh, lights lit, I didn't get the WF Data East Royal Rumble, I got the pin 2 sign, but my shaker motor was going off. I'm like, why is my shit, it's just going. I, obviously, like after two seconds, you're like, what the fuck, and I, I unplug it. I'm like, why is my shit, I've never heard that before, my shaker motor is going crazy. I then pull out the ROM chip again because I'm like, all right, you know, this is why I'm thinking it's the ROM chip. I didn't have the shaker motor before. I pulled the ROM chip out. I fixed the leg. I put it back in. All of a sudden, I'm getting a shaker motor spinning. I pulled the ROM chip out. Now, this time when I pulled it out, I like bent one of the legs. And I'm like, oh shit, now I fucked up this ROM chip. I try to put it back in. It was like the same thing. Now keep in mind, I have basically two sets of ROM chips. I have the 1.03, my original one that came with this, and then I have the Pinball ROM 1.06. So I messed up, I believe I messed up the 1.06 one. Uh, so I then went back to the 1.03, I put it in, my shaker motor is still just spinning. So I'm like, maybe it's not a ROM chip issue, maybe it's something else. Um, it basically was, it was a back and forth battle. Sure enough, my shaker motor stopped spinning. The game boots, and I'm talking like after, no joke, you're talking about like an hour of me turning on and off this thing. The game boots. And then all of a sudden, I start smelling like a, like a burning smell. And I'm like, what the, f and I quickly turned it off. I power it back on and I hear, like a like a solenoid is active like boom it's actually this right here the launch button the launch solenoid to throw the ball in because there's no plunger on this it's just solid on and i'm like first i had a shaker motor issue now i got this i'm like what the fuck and luckily i caught it in time where it didn't burn the coil anyway i turned it off i turn it back on and again same thing i right now have this solenoid this coil is always on and I said, you know what? Let me see if I could start a game with this coil on. Sure enough, it started smoking. And I'm like, oh, I, I quickly turned it off. And now it's like, you're talking like three nights of me now just looking up, going on like pin side, going to message boards, watching YouTube videos. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with my Royal Rumble? And again, the first night I'm like punching the air. I'm like, why did I touch this? Why, why did I touch something that wasn't broken? Why, 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 why? <laughs> now I'll tell you what I discovered and how I fixed it. Maybe somebody has the same issue. I unfortunately there was no videos on this specific situation where I, I had this ball launch always on. Other people had different issues um, and I'm going to tell you about my issues but basically if you're in this hobby you definitely need a multimeter. That is like, the, get this first. This is like the first thing you need. I had this lying around for like years and I was like looking at pin side and people's reviews, you need a multimeter. So I cranked this thing out. I'm looking carefully because honestly at the end of uh, right now, I feel like I could fix any Data East pinball machine now because I've done so much research on this. It is wild, but basically what am I getting at with this? You have to prepare yourself. There is a lot, there's a lot going on in these 
in these machines. Regular, even now, current gen pinball machines and these, there's a lot going on. So what I discovered, I had to basically start, I had to, I had to pinpoint where, number one, the solenoid was. It's actually on this, which is a PPB board. Um, that's where it kind of started here. Then this is the CPU board. These are expensive. A new one is like 500 bucks. So this right here is the ROM chip. That's the chip right there. So again, I was going, you know, I, I popped it in, I popped it out. I don't want to make this a long story, but basically what happened, I had one of these, you see these right here, two, four, there's five of these. Uh, they're called tip 36. This tip 36 transistor, one of them was dead. Now you might be saying, hey Vic, how do you test for that? Man, there's like two videos online that show you how to test for a tip 36. Big thing is that you have to disconnect everything from the board. You don't have to remove the board, but you gotta disconnect everything. You basically take like your multimeter, there's three legs on this, this transistor, and uh, depending on how you do it, you're gonna hear a tone or you're not. Basically, one of them had a tone. So now, if you're watching this, you're having the same issue. It was the Q5, the top transistor. That Q5, and it's actually funny, there's a whole like, I'll, I'll put it here, there's a whole chart on, at least for like Data East, it looks like there's a whole like power chart. And you basically could pinpoint what transistor it is by reading this chart. I, I, I'll be honest, it was like, um, it was just satisfying to bring it back to life because I'm like, I got it, yes. But I ain't gonna tell you it was an easy process. It definitely was not. Basically, again, like I said, it was a transistor that died. I gotta put it up against my shirt, but this right here, look. This little thing, is what was always activating this solenoid. It, the, the craziest thing was, was it went through so many, like, it went through so much. And going up online and you read up, like if you look at Data East, the bottom lights, the GI isn't lighting, people can say it's like the power supply board. These boards are old. This is the original power supply. I don't know if it ever got recapped. I mentioned it when I first got it that I wanted to recap it. But I think for 150 bucks, you could just get a whole brand new power supply, which if that ever happened, I would probably do that. Um, anyway, I actually even went out and I got a desoldering iron. You definitely need that. For, for these type of boards or any like PC boards, you need a desoldering iron. This is the old chip. This is the broken chip. I could finally junk this. I bought this chip. It's a five pack on Amazon for like eight bucks. Uh, I got this now in and uh, the game booted. My launcher wasn't, was no longer stuck, but I had my dead, my dead drop targets, my slingshots and my pop bumpers weren't working now. I'm like, oh shit. It's just like one thing after another. I later on discovered the fuse. One of my fuses blew. Went back on Amazon, ordered a five pack for like eight bucks, pop that fuse in, and that is it. My game now is up and running. You wanna know what's funny after this whole thing? I did the live stream of the 1.06, and I made the call, and I did it live on stream. Uh, I, I, I hit a billion, but 1.06 had a weird thing in the code where it rewarded you an extra ball and I felt like I was cheating, so I, I, I turned off the machine. Right after that stream, I said to myself, I'm gonna make the official video about me finishing my Royal Rumble, and then it went down. And I'm like, son of a bitch, th like, what, a, what an awful time for a machine to go down right when I'm getting ready to, uh, you know, make the final video. Now, I'm still not done. Uh, you can't really see it on the camera, but the trans light now. So while I'm waiting for this trend, honestly, it's while I was doing this whole figuring out what my, the problem is with my machine, my trans light here, this is the original trans light from 1994. It does have brown spots here, almost like water. And I discovered that it's a thing, it's condensation. When there was like halogens, it was so hot and apparently it actually made condensation. So I have like these brown stains right here. It's only at the bottom here. It almost looks like coffee stains and it kind of annoys me. Um, so I discovered I could take the trans light off and I thought maybe I could clean, you know, I could clean the glass. Maybe it's the glass that's dirty. 
when I was pulling the trans light off, this area right here is actually stuck to the glass and I ripped the trans light. Not to mention I discovered that this browning is it's on the actual trans light. So that's why right now I'm probably at 99% complete. I have to now order a new trans light. Um, it's funny because the WWF has like two other prototype trans lights and I don't like them. I want to keep this machine original. I like this. When I think Royal Rumble, I think of this trans light here. Uh, somebody in Australia has it. It's about 120 bucks for a new trans light, you know, landed to me. I'm going to have to pull the trigger on that because they're the only ones that have a trans light. I don't like the prototype designs. I think it's ugly. Uh, it, I don't, I don't like it. I'd like to keep this stuff original as can be. So when I take this trans light off, I'm going to clean the glass and then I will make my official video. It's actually pretty cool. I can't talk too much about it, but, uh, the gentleman's name is Andrew from retro city. The person that sells the DMD, the pin two DMD. Um, he actually commented on my video yesterday. And, uh, there's one thing about this DMD that somebody commented on that video. They said, Hey Vic, are you able to see the diagnostics? And I said, actually, no, I cannot see the diagnostics. So I still have my old DMD. So if I ever have to change anything, I just attach the old DMD. But Andrew messaged and he said, Hey guys, I'm running a beta. And uh, if you guys are down, you could test out this beta. It should let you see the diagnostics. So I'm going to probably do that during the week. It's just cool. As you can see how social media and videos, no matter how long I talk and people, you know, sometimes people just don't like that. I talk too much. That is just my style, but, uh, it's just cool to see how, you know, you make a video, same thing. Like I said, I forgot the, 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 there's two guys. One guy, I believe his name is Chris. He, he literally has a, his, his job, or I would say his passion is fixing these boards. You could send him a dead board, a PPB board, a, a PCU board, a, a, a power supply, and he'll fix it. And he's actually not that expensive. I think if you wanted to send in your CPU board, it's like 120 bucks for him to like diagnose it and fix it. I'm like, that's not, if you don't know what you're doing, you'd probably have to do that. But I'm just more of like, um, I'm the type, again, like I mentioned before in other videos, I like to tinker. So for me to grab a multimeter and just try to learn, I'm, I'm a fan of learning. How do these machines work? That is just how my mind works. And like I said, now with all the research I've done, definitely if I ever come across a dead data East pinball machine, I would definitely lowball you. I would take it. And then I would probably try to figure out, I, I would, I don't want to, I don't want to, I would probably be able to figure out what's wrong with it, but it's just kind of cool to see, as you can see these videos, people watch them. And uh, again, if those two people on YouTube didn't make a video on how to test a transistor, I might've been dead in the sauce, but uh, all in all, it is great, amazing stuff. I'm just happy. Let me go through the diagnostics. Oh yeah. I'm just happy that my Royal Rumble is back to life. The last and final thing, which I don't think I'm going to do, I'm contemplating on doing it, is I probably have to paint the, the artwork black. Some of it has some dings, but as of right now, again, I did the whole LED conversion. That's a whole journey. I'm going to talk about that on the final video. This one right here was to talk about the transistor issue. Be sure to stay tuned as I do have a final video planned for the Royal Rumble. Once I get the trans light in, I'm going to order that today. It's coming from Australia. I don't know how long it's going to take, but basically once that is in, I can make the final video showing off everything that I did for it. I'm just happy it's, it's back. I'm happy it's working. It's been a rough week. Uh, I would, oh, I'm, I'm in the garage and I'm like, why did I touch it? I would see it and it's like dead. I'm like, why did I touch it? Why? I'm just, I'm just very happy that it's, it's back. It's, it was a rough couple of days. I missed hearing Macho Man's call outs and uh, the, my neighbor kiddo, he's like, can I play Royal Rumble? And I'm like, I broke it. <laughs> but yes, there you guys have it. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. Man, it's time to rumble.